Well, welcome to the bench. And today we're going to make this ratchet. And after we make the ratchet, we'll make the click. Then we'll make the click screw. And then we'll drill the hole and install a tapered pin with a spring washer behind the uh, ratchet there. And that'll pretty much finish the uh, uh, main uh, spring installation. So let's go ahead out to the drafting table and get started. This is W.R. Smith's drawing of the uh, cutter that he was going to use. I actually use uh, high-speed steel, so I have to make a different drawing. So I'm just using his uh, dimensions and everything, but I'm uh, uh, copying it out here so that when I make mine out of high-speed steel, I'll have something to reference it to to make sure I'm uh, uh, within uh, his guidelines for the cutter for the ratchet. So that's what I'm doing here on the table. It's a quarter inch piece of uh, high speed steel that I'm going to be using. And we're going to put the uh, the angle of the cutter in there. There we go. And now we're splitting that angle in half so that we can uh, put our curve. There's a curve on the cutting edge. It's not much of a curve. It's just a little curve, but it's it's there. And now we're just going to do a three degree offset on the front or for the relief on the front there and just mark it there. That'll do fine. Let's go down to the cellar. I'm using a jig here to put my table at eight degrees, which is uh, the uh, relief that I want on this cutter and the front angle. I've almost got it all done. So just a few cuts here. Now we're doing that side, uh, that three degree relief on the side. And we still don't have the curve on the front yet. So now I've got this uh, spinning in my mill. And I've got towels everywhere because it's really letting it off. But I'm trying to hold it at the uh, eight degree relief and get that uh, curve. Uh, the diameter of the is working for that. We're cutting it in brass, so it's going to be a, a no top relief. So we're just simply flattening it here, and getting the cutting edges uh, cleaned up. And now we can check it out. Now it seems to fit in there quite nicely. Okay, this, we're cutting the ratchet here. And uh, we're using a six degree offset. Uh, very similar to the, what I did in uh, making the small ratchet in one of my other videos. cutting rather deep because I think I'm actually going to cut two or three different ratchets out of this uh, just to throw a couple in my my box so I've got a couple for other jobs Alright, this ought to be the last cut. Now I've got a, uh, a rounded uh, cutter here and I'm just making a plunge cut in here in the, into the face of the uh, ratchet just as a decorative just something decorative. And 
And now we're cut off the first wheel here. And now I'm just uh, boxing out the center hole so that I can square it to fit the uh, the uh, uh, mainspring arbor. Now I've got the ratchet on my aluminum hold down plate here. And uh, the aluminum is quite good for holding down the brass parts and stuff that I'm going to be working on. I have a series of files here that I uh, use just to square out these holes. It takes a little bit of time. Well, that kind of gets us closer in there to the end. It still needs to be flipped over and worked on, uh, but that's pretty close to the end. Now, this doesn't have to be very precise, but I worked out a position that I thought the best place for the click screw is. So we need to get the uh, the hole tapped and a screw made before we can actually make the click so that we can uh, make a, a, a drawing, a scale drawing of what we we're thinking of here for the click. So I'm tapping the hole here now. I just put a uh, screw in there to hold it and put the ratchet on there. Now I got an idea. This is the important part, the angle here. And I drew, I'm just showing you one of, uh, I think I drew three clicks before I finally got the one that I thought was aesthetically pleasing and worked well, would work well. As and I'm just getting this close. Start cutting it out on the on the bandsaw again. I think I actually made three before I actually got the one that I thought uh, was the, the what I liked. I got kind of particular on these uh, clicks. Now to finish it off, I took a piece of coal roll steel and I made a filing button. Normally I'd uh, case harden it or I'd use uh, uh, tool steel and harden it, uh, but not for this job. Uh, I don't believe uh, that that's necessary. So I put it in vertically first and then just got my round shape uh, using the button as a, uh, as a guide. and flipped it onto the side and now we're doing a little cross filing but mostly draw filing here to, to uh, uh, finish off the edges and make sure they're around with the cold roll steel button now we need a screw to hold the click in place so I've got a piece of uh, a drill rod here 
I think drill rod makes really good screws and it also allows you to harden them. And I, I've got a die in there and I'm uh, getting the threads in there. I don't need much, but I'm going to check them first to make sure that I got a sufficient amount there. So we'll put the click on there and let's see what we got. Yeah, there we go. That's pretty good. So now we're going to put an end on it. Uh, cut this little piece off. And now you can see with my cutoff tool I left just a little bit out there so that I could find it with my slitting saw. And I'm cutting my uh, my slot with a slitting saw. You see I'm making several passes here. I did not know how deep I wanted to go. So I was looking at one of the old screws that I made and then uh, just eyeballing it through here. That's why there's so many passes. Normally I would just make uh, make it all in one pass. Now I forgot to put it in there uh, but this screw was hardened. I hardened it uh, and quenched it and I forgot I didn't take any pictures of it so this is a hardened screw now it's in my watchmakers lathe and I'm using boxwood to clean up the threads and get it ready for polishing this is the polishing uh, on the iron lap that I made to fit on my lathe mostly squares it out now the bell metal lap does most of the work I really like the bell metal it uh, does a really 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 nice job And now we'll get over to the boxwood and get in the sides again to make sure everything comes up nice. And in between each one of these, of course, you're putting it in and you're cleaning it with a, a lighter fluid. But now we're down to the last one, and so there's no more touch in the screw. Fingerprint would ruin it right now, so we clean it up with the lighter fluid. And now we're ready to temper it to uh, blue. And I just use a screw plate and an alcohol lamp. It takes about four minutes for a screw this size. I got my glass of water there. Once I see the color that I like, I'll just dump it in the water to stop the uh, process. And there we go. There's the final screw. And there it is in position on the click on the uh, clock itself. Now we need to drill that hole in there to hold that uh, to put a uh, tapered pin in there to hold the ratchet in position. You can see that the back of the square section there where it turns around has got a little bit of a shoulder and I've got a spring, uh, spring washer that fits on that shoulder fairly well. Yeah there's a spring washer. And now we're ready to put the ratchet on that. And we'll put the, uh, there we go. There's a tapered pin. And there's the hole. And I need to trim that down and clean it up, clean the pin up and trim it down. And I also need to check on the back and make sure it's not rubbing the frame. Well, that about finishes up everything that I planned on this video. Next one, we're going to be uh, working on the fusee. And uh, we'll install it into the plates back here or something like that. It goes above the, uh, uh, the mainspring. And I've already got a video out on how I made it and how I made the great wheel. So if you want to look at those, I, I will open the video up, uh, the next video up with a, a slight recap of the making of uh, the fusee and the uh, uh, great wheel. Uh, so that's for the next time. And I want to thank you all for stopping by. And uh, I hope I'll see you on the next one. Have a nice day. Bye now.